Welcome to MetsMorizeOnline.com's Prospect Pulse. I'm minor league analyst Mitch Patanik, and today we're going to take a look at Mets outfield prospect Matt Dendecker. Dendecker uh, started the year with Double A Binghamton last year and absolutely killed it. Um, it prompted the organization to promote him to Triple A after I believe 58 games maybe 68. I don't have his stats in front of me right now. Uh, but he absolutely killed it at double A. When he moved up to triple A, um, he struggled a bit. Um, and that was, that has typically been the trend with then Decker over the course of his three year career in the Mets organization. What we're starting to see is if you look at his stats, when he makes a jump to a level, there's almost like an adjustment period where he struggles. And then when he starts the season at that level the next year, He's absolutely dominating and killing it, prompting the Mets to to promote him. So it's going to be really interesting to see what he does at AAA this year, um, where he should start the season uh, out in Las Vegas in 2013. After struggling a little bit last year, this year, if he follows the trend, he should absolutely dominate. So that's a little background about Den Decker. Let's take a look at his uh, hitting mechanics. And... As usual, I'm using the iPad app Ubersense, and this is the YouTube video from BaseballInstinct.com. You could see that at the bottom of the screen. And we're just going to go ahead and, and take a look at his mechanics. So <clears throat> let's start the swing. And right off the bat, you notice that his hands are very high in his uh, stance. And typically, it's where a hitter's comfortable, but a lot of times when a, a hitter's hands are that high, you want to make sure that they could get it down into the hitting zone um, and and not cost himself any type of, you know, being late on the swing, any type of uh, uh, bats, bat speed. So you want to be able to catch up with the fastball, and it doesn't look like Dendecker has any problem. He starts his hands very high, but he gets his hands into the hitting zone, um, right into the zone, and it's a nice weight shift, good load, and right here, is where I find a very minor mechanical um, issue with Den Decker's swing. And I'll bring out the pencil um, and show you guys what I mean. Hang on one second. All right, here's get the pencil up. And what you're going to look at is his foot. Oh, wrong, wrong one. Here we go. Circle. Okay, watch his foot. It opens up prematurely. See how that foot opens up? Now what that's causing is his hips to open up early. And what that leads to is susceptibility to outside pitches or off-speed pitches by opening that up early. What you generally want to see and, and teach hitters to do is when they plant this front foot here, you want to have it straight, uh, as straight as his back foot is. So what that's causing is it's it's causing him to keep his weight back, keep his hips closed so he's not opening up too early. And I'll always remember when I was a young player, I used to work out with a um, a scout from the Chicago White Sox. And he was always big on this front foot here. And he would always compare and, and tell me that front foot is almost like a dial. And the more it opens or closes, will tell you um, how how high a uh, hitter's batting average is going to be. So <clears throat> the guys who had their foot closed, that front foot closed, kept their hips closed, they tended to be guys that hit over 300. He he would always refer to look at Tony Gwynn, look at, you know, look at some of these great hitters, look at how they're, they're you know, look at their front foot. And then he would compare it to other guys who hit in the 270s who may be power hitters, but those guys always, their foot always opened just a little bit early, letting that hip open up. And that really, he always said, was what um, determined whether a hitter was going to be a, a, a 270, a 275, a 285. And he, he used that foot and, and how far it opened as, as a dial to, to, to gauge what the batting average was going to be. So I always found that interesting. It always stuck with me. And, you know, Den Decker, if he wants to fix this, there are easy uh, muscle memory drills that he could do. Um, the White Sox scout that I always used to work with always used to tell me, uh, you know, anytime you're swinging and, and you're trying to work on your, your swing and your hitting mechanics, you always put your brain into the portion of the body that you're working on because hitting is mostly muscle memory. So what Dendeka would want to do is 
typically put his brain in his front foot. And it sounds crazy, but really all you're going to be doing is when you're swinging, you're not worrying about anything else during your swing, aside from keeping that front foot closed, keeping that front foot closed. Then once that front foot stays closed, it's all muscle memory. It should stay like that um, once you're once you got it down packed, it's muscle memory. So you put your brain into the, to the area that you need to be fixed until it's fixed. And then once it's fixed, you can move on to other things. And then when it's all said and done, you get in that batter's box during the game, everything should come together using muscle memory. So <clears throat> all in all, Dan Decker has a, a really smooth swing. I mean, that's a really pretty swing. Um, aside from the little, um, mechanical glitch with the front foot opening up, um, I mean, he's got a really solid swing. I'm really going to be excited to see what we could do at the AAA level this year.